On today's quick tip video, we're going to learn how to make luminosity masks using a panel in Photoshop. And that panel is free. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. What are luminosity masks? Well, they are masks that target luminosity. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Like and subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so what is a luminosity mask? It's a way to tell Photoshop to create a selection around the brightest values of light that it sees in the scene, the brightest values of mint tones it sees in the scene, or the brightest values of dark tones of light that it sees in the scene. Targeting the deepest, darkest shadows, the mint tones, or the highlights. Luminosity mask. That mask can be tied to adjustment layers, to tools in Photoshop that let you do a lot. So the question we need to ask ourselves is why would we use a luminosity mask? This image of my friend Autumn, you can see more of her amazing artwork by visiting the Instagram account at the link below. This image has already went through a retouch of using frequency separation, dodging and burning. The next step of the artistic process is to give it a color grade. So how would I color grade it typically without worrying about luminosity masks? Well, I'm gonna pick some colors. I wanna work with two colors specifically and infuse them into the art. I'm gonna go ahead and pick colors I see in the scene. So I see some purple and blue, green, yellow, orange, pretty much every color of the spectrum, which incidentally this backdrop is called Spectrum and it's a part of a series that I designed for a fantastic company called Intuition Backgrounds. They have a wide array of beautiful backdrops designed by different artists, different mediums that you can get them in. So go to the description below to go to their main website to check out more about Intuition Backgrounds. So let's start, I'm gonna choose a purple and my favorite tool in Photoshop adjustment layer to use for color grading is a solid color adjustment layer. So I'm going to come up to solid color and then I'm going to pick a color of purple and let's say I want the purple to be in the darker parts of the scene and I want an orange to be in the brighter parts of the scene. So I'm going to pick a deep purple. Now I need to choose a blending mode in Photoshop that lets this color interact with the layer below. So I'm going to choose soft light which is one of my favorite blending modes to use when I'm color grading. Now this is globally changing the image using soft light as the blending mode with this deep color of purple. I'm going to lower the opacity of this a little bit to like 34 percent. Now we've got a baseline of that purple. Let's choose a solid color, I'm sorry, a solid color adjustment layer of orange and not yellow. Let's go to orange. There we go. We'll choose a bright orange soft light as the blending mode, and then lower the opacity significantly to about 20%. We have two colors working together that we find in the scene. This is a harmony, so to speak. We can say this is the color grade because it is. It's done. We can save it and deliver it to the client and put it out into the world. I want more artistic choice than that. And I want that process to be something that pays respect to one of the most primary things you would consider about photography, which is the lighting, the clothing, the lighting, all of that works together, the pose to create impact in this image. So when I'm color grading, I want that same level of impact to add to the photography. It's a harmony between photography and digital photo editing. So to get further control, I'm going to turn off this orange adjustment layer for right now. I want those purples to only be seen in the darkest points of luminosity within the scene. So let's say the shadows. Now I can use the mask that comes with the adjustment layer. Right now it's a white mask or a reveal all. So we see the entire effect. If I only want to target, have it appear in the shadows, I would have to invert this mask to make it black, then paint white on it to reveal the purple. And I would reveal the purple in the shadow parts of the jacket here and the hair and so forth and work around the scene. That painting is gonna take time and precision and control to be able to paint it. What if there's a faster way? Well, there is a blending mode called Lighten. Its job is to take the colors and to lighten the shadows with that color. So by simply going to a blending mode of Lighten, that's actually kind of a cool stylized effect. So again, we could change the blending mode. We could do the same thing for the orange solid color adjustment layer, work with different blending modes globally to see how it infuses into the scene. Color grade is done, deliver. I want more control than that. And I don't wanna to have to spend a lot of time painting that's where luminosity masks come into play. I can tell Photoshop, search the luminosity values of the image, find the deepest, darkest shadows in the scene. 
and then make that a selection so that if I were to use a solid color adjustment layer of purple, you would only target those deepest values of shadows or find the brightest highlights in the scene and make that my selection. So I can use an adjustment layer to target that, but I want more control. I want more precision. I don't want to just find the deepest shadows. Maybe I want to find somewhere mid between the brightest shadows and the deepest shadows, the mid tones, if you will. So a luminosity mask is what I need from Photoshop to be able to do this. How do we make luminosity masks? Well, you can actually make them in Photoshop organically very easily because they're made up from the channels. Now, if you're new to digital photo editing in Photoshop and you're a beginner in Photoshop, go with me on this. Just keep listening. I know this may sound complex, but it's actually very easy to understand. If we look at the channels, the channels are essentially made up of the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. Those three combined form RGB, which is how we see the image in color. So if I were to turn one of these off, now we're seeing a mixture of the green and blue channels. If I turn uh, red off, but turn off green, we're seeing a mixture of the red and blue. All of three combined give us what we appropriately see for color or typically see for color. But what if I just go to one of the channels? Let's say the red channel. Right now we don't see any color in it. We would expect to see a whole bunch of red, but we don't because we need to see combos of it. But what we are seeing is white, gray, and black. It looks black and white on the screen right now, right? White, gray, and black are the three colors that are associated to luminosity values in Photoshop. White is for highlights, gray is for midtones, black is for the shadows. That's how Photoshop can use color to be able to see luminosity and to understand it. So in this case, even though it looks black and white, let's think about it. The brightest points are some of these highlights on her face, on the background. That's some of the brightest points where the flash hit her in the background. Some of the darker points where we see black is in her armpits, on the jacket and so forth with the ripples of the jacket. Those are where the light cascaded on those ripples and created some shadows. This is a reflection of the lighting that we did on purpose on set when we captured these images. What if we go to another channel and only look at that one? So we're looking at the red and look at her skin. Look at the brightness that we see of the white or the luminosity values of brightness. If we go to just blue, everything is much darker. Look at her face, how it appears a little bit darker. Why is that? Why are we seeing less light in this channel? Because the color blue is a little bit of a deeper of a tone in this sense when Photoshop is working with these three channels together. So the point being here that the blue channel can be depended upon for finding darker tones in the scene, less light values. So how do I make a luminosity mask from this? It's really easy. I just hold control or command and click. And now I've made a selection. And if I want to refine the selection to open it up to find more of those shadows and really niche it down, so to speak, hold control and shift at the same time and keep clicking. It's gonna refine that mask and continue with the selection going forward. With that selection active, all I have to do is return to the layers, choose that solid color adjustment layer, and it will populate with a mask immediately. So I'm gonna say solid color adjustment layer. Let's pick that purple again, deep purple, hit okay. And instantaneously we see the mask. Anything in white's being revealed, anything in black is being concealed. So a lot of the purple is visible right now. I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be where we only see the purple in the shadow. So I can hit Control or Command and letter I while that layer mask is selected. Now we see an odd inversion of what we typically would expect to see. But remember, anything in white is being revealed. Anything black is being concealed. So the brightest parts of the image are being concealed. We're targeting the darker values within the scene of luminosity to reveal this purple. That's the function of a luminosity mask so that ultimately we can use the light values in the scene to be able to target the artwork that we want to do to it in the color grade. Now doing these luminosity masks organically in Photoshop, it's not a lot of easy control of the precision of that selection. And it has an unfortunate byproduct of adding to the file size of your image, because typically you would want to make that selection and make it its own channel. So you can return to that selection as you continue to pick more colors in the same color family to color grade. And I'll explain what that means here in just a moment. So with that process of taking more time and it's fat, it's not as easy to make those easy selections and so forth organically in Photoshop. That's where Lumenzia comes into play. Lumenzia is essentially a plugin for Photoshop that makes it really easy 
to make luminosity masks and then to output them to the tools in Photoshop to create whatever you want to do. Lumenzia was designed by Greg Benz. This is the full version of it. I've had it for years. I love Lumenzia because of the technical precision it can give to you so that you can use your artistic mind to create some beautiful artwork. In the description below is a link to Greg's website where you can purchase the full version of Lumenzia. Now, at the time of this recording, I think Lumenzia is like $50 and it's a one-time purchase. You get lifetime updates. That is a incredibly affordable, affordable amount of money to spend for such a very, very powerful tool. But Greg has just launched a free version of it, Lumenzia Lite, which gives you the basic controls that you need to target the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights, and then to output them to adjustment layers. So that's what this panel represents. Now I know at first glance, this panel seems really complex, but the light version, which is free, you can download it and use it, will give you the ability to target shadows, midtones, and highlights, and then output them to adjustment layers. Each one of these icons are the icons that correspond to every one of these, these basic adjustment tools in Photoshop. So the solid color adjustment layer is that icon. So let's give a demo of what this can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by targeting the brightest points in the scene or the lights. So I'm gonna click L. It's gonna make some helper layers. Now we see what we expect to see. Anything white is being concealed, anything black is being, hit, I'm sorry, anything white is being revealed, black is being concealed. So we see white, gray, and black. Highlights, shadows, and midtones. So now that I've selected it, I can now have a precision control. It's chosen 1.5, I can move the slider up and it will find more of the light values in the scene. Or I can take it down and say, I want you to find just the brightest points within this image. So if we go to a level of four, we can see we're only seeing a little bit of the backdrop, some of her hand and some of the effects on that backdrop of spectrum from intuition backgrounds. I can take it even further to the point where we won't even see any light at all. We don't see any white in the mask because that's how far down we can go in the precision of the selection. So let's go back up to, let's say 1.5 and we see a whole bunch of stuff. So great, now that I know the precision control, I need to tell Lumenzia what to do with this selection. So I'm going to click the solid color adjustment layer. It's going to make one, fill the mask that comes with it with that selection that we just refined. So there's the selection that we saw with the precision slider. And then we it arbitrarily chose the color orange. We double click this. We can choose our own color of orange, whatever we want it to be. Its intensity, its values, lower the opacity of it. It put it on a blending mode of soft light. We can change that as well. So now we have orange targeted into the scene in those specific key areas of bright values. But some of those darker shadow areas don't have that color worked into it. And all of that was done with a very simple click of a button, precision slider, and then the output. But let's go on. I'm gonna add now those purple values into the shadows. So I'm gonna click D for the darks or the shadow scenes. Now this is a, a, a kind of an inversion of what we typically expect to see. Anything white is being revealed. So it's looking for the darkest values of luminosity based upon this pre precision slider. I cannot say the word precision and slider very easily, plus I haven't drank all my coffee. Anyway, so I'm gonna reduce this because I wanna target the deepest shadows in the scene. So the more that I bring this pre precision <laughs> slider, the the slider down the more that we see less white in the mask so around 4.5 that looks pretty good to me 4.25 so i'm going to say all right make me a solid color adjustment layer it makes one in that color of orange double click it come down and choose that deep purple hit okay we see the same mask we just saw a moment ago we're in a blending mode of soft light i could change this to lighten if i want to i can reduce the opacity i can keep it on soft light i can use the creative opportunities of layer blending modes because, and use the creative opportunities of adjustment layers, but they're being controlled artistically with precision by the luminosity mask. And I can go further than that. So I can go back and say, target more of those shadows. But this time, instead of going all the way down to find the deepest shadows within the scene, let's find some of those general shadows within the scene. So we're on a precision of 2.5. Let's go back to that solid color adjustment layer. It's going to output it in that color of orange, double click it. And instead of going into that deep purple, let's go more toward the magentas and start getting a different tone of purple magenta into this scene. Hit OK. It's on that blending mode of soft light. Let's reduce the opacity just a little bit. 
Now let's go back to the light values. Let's find the light values, but more generally. So we're targeting less of them and having just a little bit more of that hint into it. So we're at a precision of three. Let's do a solid color adjustment layer, but this time instead of it being orange, let's go to the red family and find something that's more of a red orange and increase it just a little bit. There we go. Now we have that output on soft light before and after. It's just a little hint of it. I can lower the opacity just a touch. So instead of spending time trying to remember what the blending modes do or creating the luminosity masks organically in Photoshop and trying to control shift and get it down, make its own channel and work with it and so forth, I can use Lumenzia in these basic quick controls, get precision over it, and then choose all of these artistic options, these tools in Photoshop that are some of the most basic tools in Photoshop to use to be able to work them together to make a beautiful, beautiful color grade. And the best part about it is that Lumenzia Light is free. So you get the ability to make the luminosity masks and that precision control, and then all of the adjustment layers. It's brilliant. It's a no brainer to do, and it's very easy to use. So let's finish up this quick tutorial today with some final thoughts. I am very fortunate to be able to do the work that I do. And I love reading messages from people both on YouTube and on social media, the students that I mentor, the conferences that I teach at. People tell me how much they love my work and it means a lot to me. And then inevitably I start hearing, I wish I could do what you can do. This is how I do it. This is one of those steps. And I got to that step. I learned about Lumenzia, I think in 2013, because I went on a quest to learn how to color grade. And simple, good enough was not good enough for me. I understood what the blending mode of Lighten did. I understood what the blending mode of soft light did. But I wanted more because I kept asking myself the question, okay, great, one color on a blending mode of soft light? Okay, good, that's cool. What more can it do? What more can this solid color adjustment layer do? What more can these blending modes do? And when I learned about luminosity masks, I went, this is what I've been looking for. And the person who taught me about it looked at me like I was silly and went, they've been there all along. You just didn't know that they were there. And that simple process in Photoshop single-handedly changed everything that I do in my art process when I work in digital photo editing. Lumenzia made it so much easier to do. It made it faster. It gave me more control. That's why Greg made the tool in the first place, made the plugin to make it better and faster and easier to use. You still have to understand why things work in Photoshop so that you can take your imagination even further to know how to utilize something like Lumenzia to its fullest potential. But it's inside of you to do it. The tools are out there to do. 50 bucks, trust me, spend $50 to buy the full version of it. If you're a landscape photographer, oh my gosh, Lumenzia is going to take your art to a whole new plane. If you're a portrait photographer, if you photograph potted plants, Lumenzia is a great, great tool. Now in the description below is the link to his website. I'm not an affiliate. I don't get any money from this. I just love the program. And I've been meaning to make tutorials about this for a while. And then he has had a light version of it for a long time that was free, but the interface has changed. He made it more streamlined and he just launched it. I got a message about it because I'm on his subscribe uh, mailing list. And I saw that and I was like, I got to push out a tutorial for this because now it's free for the basic functions of it. That's well worth the time. It's well worth the $50. You are well worth spending your time and energy finding the limitless possibilities of your imagination. That concludes this tutorial today. If you like the content you found in it, please give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks for watching today. And until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.